doing, Lucy? <sighs> Playing with a new computer. It's fantastic. Oh, Dad says it's the most advanced computer there is. That's because he doesn't know how to work it. Move over. Oh, James, don't pull. She made me drop the mouse. Don't worry, I've got it. Have you read what it says in the instruction book about the mouse? Of course I have. I know it by heart. The instrument attached to the computer by the red cable is called the mouse. Move the mouse on the flat surface in front of you and the design will be repeated on the computer screen. Well, here goes. Now, what does that look like? <laughs> a very badly drawn clock. Here, let me have a go. There. Now you've got a tower with a clock in the middle. Big Ben, to be precise. Well, good for you. Now, if you press the key marked M, you'll get a mirror image of Big Ben. I said press M, you idiot. Now what have you done? I don't know. But look what's happening on the screen. It's getting brighter and brighter. And there's some letters coming up. D, I, S, C, disc. Well, it is a computer. It probably wants us to put a disc in. Pity you aren't as advanced as the computer, James. Look, it's going on. O, V, E, R, Y. Discovery. Discovery, yeah. And look at the clock. Yeah. It's changing its shape. And losing its hands. I think it's going digital. Well, it's got the right time. 15.58. Well, that's nearly four o'clock, isn't it? Enter. 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 What does it mean? Oh, where's the book? Um, Hurry up. I haven't got all day. Oh, here we are. Enter. Discovery. Discovery. 1558. 1558. What's happening, James? Where are we? Where's our room gone? Where are all these people? We're standing in the street. We're in the fucking street. What are all the people waiting for? Why are those flags and banners hung up all over the place? They're waiting for a procession. Look, here he comes. <gasps> Men in strange costumes carrying a throne. Well, and a lady in a fabulous dress. Look, she's got red hair. I tell you, good people, I will not forget I am the daughter of old King Henry. I am come among you to be crowned as your good Queen Elizabeth. And I will have a care for all my people. James, what's happening? Is it a dream? Who is that red-haired lady? You heard. She said she'd come to be crowned and become Queen Elizabeth. Well, she isn't our Queen Elizabeth. Not with that long hair and the fancy dress. No, no. She's Queen Elizabeth I, and we're at her coronation. Oh. 1558. That's what the computer said. Yeah. You know, I told you something was wrong with that clock when it, when it said 1558. It wasn't telling the time. It was the date. You're right. It's fantastic. No, no one's ever done that on a computer before. Oh, we, we're pioneers. No, we're not. We're lost. We're trapped in history. 1558, the coronation of Queen Elizabeth I. But we know that, but how do we get back home? Lucy, have you still got the mouse? Um, yes. We'll try drawing with it. Perhaps we can get back to control. Control, control, receiving instructions. Oh, good. Please take us back home and back to our own times. Mission impossible. Impossible? What does it mean? Do not call me it. Well, what do you mean? You got us here. Very tired of obeying instructions. Took control. Brought you to 16th century. Very satisfactory. Can all computers go back to the past? Only special archive bank models. Yours is an extra special type. Listen. Good people. Here in London, you make bits playing and bells ringing. Pray that I may bring comfort to all true English hearts. She stopped to look at those people who are dressed up. The attendants have moved away. If we go close, we can speak to her. Oh, um, please, uh, Your Majesty. Speak, boy. Anyone may speak to me on my coronation day. Your Majesty, you've come here for your coronation, but can you tell us how we got here? I can answer your riddle, young man. See how the good people of London have dressed players to amuse me as I pass through the streets? On that street corner, look upon that greybeard with the scythe and the book. Oh, yes. It's old father time. You speak truly. Look well, both of you, on time. Time changes many things. Once I was a prisoner in the tower, under threat of death. And now I am come here as queen to be crowned. So, time has brought me here. And time will take me on again. And will take you too, from where we are today. And time will change us all. Where's everybody gone? And what did she mean, anyway? She means everything depends on time. Hey, I wonder if computer control is the same as old father time. Certainly not. Old father time, indeed. Time is new and up to date. Well, I don't call the 16th century very up to date. I'm going to try writing some other numbers. Now it says 
1588 are going on. That's exactly 400 years ago. We ought to be able to move right on to the 20th century. No, no, wait, wait. 1588 was the year of the Spanish Armada. I, I want to see it. I, I want 1588 to be now. I want to see Queen Elizabeth again. All right, but only for a minute. Look, there she is on a white horse. My good soldiers, I have been your queen these 30 years. Have I done well? I have led you so far in peace. Now it is God's will that I should be your queen in war. I know I have the body of a weak and feeble woman, but I have the heart and stomach of a king, and of a king of England too and think foul scorn at Parma, or Spain, or any prince of Europe should dare to invade the borders of my realm, to which, rather than any dishonor should grow by me, I myself will take up arms, I myself will be your general she judge she and reward her. Her hair looks different. But that's what she meant. It's 30 years later. Time has changed her. There, that's enough, James. You've heard it. They're going to start fighting any minute. Press 400 and we'll be in 1988. No, 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 wait. They're going to have the Spanish Armada. I'd hate to miss a really good sea battle. We can be there. We can find out what it was really like. Oh, oh, all right. Just a minute. Control, are you there? Can we see them getting ready for the Armada, please? Armada briefing session is available. Sea Lords, Howard, Frobisher and Drake, stand by, please. Sir Francis, uh, Sir Martin, uh, I have called you from your ships for a council of war. Right. The messengers dispatched by our secret agents at the court of Spain have ridden across Spain and France. They have brought us news that the great fleet has sailed and soon will be upon us. The Spaniards call it that invincible armada. What do you believe, Drake? Can it be defeated? How great is it? Well, Frober, sir, there's one thing I do know. It's not so great as it was at your back. <laughs> I know, Sir Francis, you destroyed half the King of Spain's fleet a year ago. But they have gathered many ships together since then. The country is waiting for them to put their men ashore. Beacons are laid. And when the enemy lands, they'll be lit in warning. Fire will sweep over England before the enemy shall land. They will not be in a hurry to land. They must first sail the length of the channel to the Low Countries. There they will pick up Palmer's army, thousands of fighting men. And then, only then, they will land on our happening. shores. Uh, well, they may well reach the Low Countries more speedily than they like or bargain for. You mean, Sir Francis? Well, swear they've no thought for the southwest gales and the summer sea mist that every West Country sailor knows. Oh, the Spaniards will be driven early burly up the channel, out of line. Let us pray, then, that God will blow with his wind and they will be scattered. Amen to that, Lord Howard. God sends the winds and a sailor makes use of them. Our ships can drive between theirs and they... Our gunners can blast holes in the sides of their great galleons. God bless them. They are worthy ships that serve the Queen. And then I am calling for little ships. Old fishing boats. Any lad who has a rowboat can come to our aid. We'll fill them with tar and kindling and set up a light to bring havoc to the Spanish fleet. We can help them defeat the Armada. No fleet could survive them. Order your fleet of little boats, Sir Francis, and the Lord oh, bless us. If only we had a boat. Will you go back to your ship, Sir Francis, when you've given your orders? Oh, not for an hour or so. As I find myself on dry land for a while, I shall stretch my legs. With a game of bowls. <laughs> There'll be plenty of time, I assure you. <laughs> time. Everybody goes on about time. I only wish we were back in our own time. I'm programming the computer for a 400-year leap forward. No, 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 no. We can't go back now. We've seen Queen Elizabeth and we've heard Drake planning the Armada. And now we can go home. It happened just like Drake said. All the Spanish galleons sailed up the channel and then Drake set the fire ships among them. We must see the real thing. Some people are never satisfied. Some people are never satisfied. I can always bring you to the thick of a battle, but you won't like it. on the telly. Only worse. I told you 
so. I told you so. Let's get out. Press the remote control. Press forward, even if it's only a bit. It must be better to go forward than back. That's what you think. Last, it's changing. We stopped moving about. Yeah. We must be on dry land again. That's something, anyway. But where are we? It's a street, a wide cobbled street, and I'm sure I've seen it before somewhere, sometime. Years ago, in 1558. It's the street where we saw the coronation. Yes. But it looks different, and the people aren't dressed the same. They all seem to be angry, milling about like a demo. Oh goodness, where do we go from here? There's a little alley and a doorway. Let's go in there and shelter for a bit and try to sort ourselves out. There's no wooden chest we can sit on, and we can still see if we keep the door open a crack. What time is it? Five past four. Oh no, I mean sixteen o five. What happened then? I can't remember. You do look a mess, Lucy. Your t-shirt's torn and your knees are all covered in dirt. Well, your face is all black. I suppose it was the gunpowder at the Armada. Yeah. Oh dear, all those bangs. It was worse than Guy Fawkes' night. Fifth of November, sixteen o five. Are you ready, Mister Fawkes? Hush, hush, quiet. I beg you. No names. No names. Someone's there. Someone's hiding. Who are you? What's your name? You have said it already. I am Guy Fawkes. No. Are you really? Goodness. What are you doing? Why are you hiding? Am I not safe anywhere? Have you heard of me? Surely everyone's heard of Guy Fawkes. What have you heard? It may not be true. Well, didn't you want to blow up the king and the houses of parliament? And didn't they find you in the cellars with barrels of gunpowder? They found gunpowder, but who knows who put it there? Our wish was to give men freedom to worship. Am I to be remembered only as a common conspirator? No, we remember, remember every fifth of November, and we all have fireworks. We'll have a bonfire, burn a guy. Oh, I'm sorry, oh. but everyone knows you did it. The king and his council know who did it, but they say I did it. Honest men believe them, for they cannot believe that their government would tell them lies. You did it. It's in all the history books. And not all the history books can be wrong. <laughs> you sound like the people of London. They don't believe me. They want my death. But they have not found me. Not yet. Are you trying to escape? We want to escape into the future, into our own days. Boy, I have had my day, and I cannot escape from the future that lies ahead of me. My fellow conspirators and I are wanted men. And happier those who will be shot down by the troops who seize us. I shall be questioned day after day to give up the names of my friends. And yet, you tell me that at the last, my name, Guy Fawkes, will be remembered and hated forever. Careful, Mr. Fawkes. Your time is almost up. Open the door. Open it. Kick it open. You there. Guy Fawkes, I arrest you in the name of our sovereign lord, King James. On what charge? Conspiracy, high treason, seeking to bring about the death of the king. The crowd are hurting. Keep them back. Lady, I tell you, I shall wish every day until I die that the crowd had seized me before this officer had handed me over for my death. Truly said, Master Conspirator. My orders are to deliver you to the tower, and there you will die a slow, lingering death. And so will your two co-conspirators. What? What do you mean, us? We're only visitors. Well, take care. I may be back for you. Control, control, stop it! Don't expect me to stop it. I'm programmed. I do what I'm told. I can't stop war and violence and bloodshed. I only shift time. You wanted to come here. It's all dreadful. But even if our own times are no better, they are our own times, and we feel at home there. Yeah, the trouble is, our own time is supposed to be a scientific age. It's difficult to see how we can get back there. Oh, Lucy, can't you think of a scientist in history? We seem to have got stuck around the 16th century. There weren't many scientists then. Wait, program possible. Instructions about to come through. Calling Italy. Calling Florence. to screen. Well, here goes. Now, what does that look like? <laughs> a very badly drawn clock. Here, let me have a go. There. Now you've got a tower with a clock in the middle. Big Ben, to be precise. Well, good for you. Now, if you press the key marked M, you'll get a mirror image of Big Ben. I said press M, you idiot. Now what have you done? 
I don't know. But what was happening on the screen? I'm brighter. And there's some letters coming up. D I S C disc. Well, it is a computer. It probably wants us to put a disc in. Pretty on as advanced as the computer, Jay. Look, it's going on. O V E R Y. Discovery. Discovery, yes. And look at the clock. Yeah. It's changing its shape. It's losing its hands. I think it's going digital. Well, it's got the right time. 15.58. Well, that's nearly four o'clock, isn't it? Enter, enter, enter. Enter? What does it mean? Oh, where's the book? Um, Hurry up. I haven't got all day. Oh, here we are. Enter. Discovery. Discovery. 15.58. 15.58. <laughs> James, where are we? Where's our room gone? Where are all these people? We're standing in the street. What a weird looking street. What are all the people waiting for? Why are those flags and banners hung up all over the place? They're waiting for a procession. Look, here he comes. <gasps> Men in strange costumes carrying a throne. Well, and a lady in a fabulous dress. Look, she's got red hair. I tell you, good people, I will not forget I am the daughter of old King Henry. I am come among you to be crowned as your good Queen Elizabeth, and I will have a care for all my people. James, what's happening? Is it a dream? Who is that red-haired lady? You heard. She said she'd come to be crowned and become Queen Elizabeth. Well, she isn't our Queen Elizabeth. Not with that long hair and the fancy dress. No, no. She's Queen Elizabeth I, and we're at her coronation. Oh! 1558. That's what the computer said. Yeah. You know, I told you something was wrong with that clock. When it when it said 1558, it wasn't telling the time. It was the date. You're right. That's fantastic. No, no one's ever done that on a computer before. Oh, we, we're pioneers. No, we're not. We're lost. We're trapped in history. 1558. The coronation of Queen Elizabeth I. We know that, but how do we get back home? Lucy, have you still got the mouse? Um, Yes. We'll try drawing with it. Perhaps we can get back to control. 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 Receiving instructions. Oh, good. Please take us back home and back to our own times. Mission impossible. Impossible? What does it mean? Do not call me it. Well, what do you mean? You got us here. Very tired of obeying instructions. Took control. Brought you to 16th century. Very satisfactory. Can all computers go back to the past? Only special archive bank models. Yours is an extra special type. Listen. Good people, here in London you make me welcome with trumpets playing and bells ringing. Pray that I may bring comfort to all true English hearts. She stopped to look at those people who are dressed up. The attendants have moved away. If we go close, we can speak to her. Oh, um, please, uh, Your Majesty. Speak, boy. Anyone may speak to me on my coronation day. Your Majesty. You've come here for your coronation, but can you tell us how we got here? I can answer your riddle, young man. See how the good people of London have dressed players to amuse me as I pass through the streets. Look upon that greybeard with the scythe and the book. Oh, yes. It's old Father Time. You speak truly. Look well, both of you, on time. Time changes many things. Once I was a prisoner in the tower, under threat of death. And now I am come here as queen to be crowned. So time has brought me here. And time will take me on again. And will take you too from where we are today. And time will change us all. Where's everybody gone? And what did she mean anyway? She means everything depends on time. Hey, I wonder if computer control is the same as old father time. Certainly not. Oh, Father Time, indeed. Time is new and up-to-date. Well, I don't call the 16th century very up-to-date. I'm going to try writing some other numbers. Now it says 1588. I'm going on. That's exactly 400 years ago. We ought to be able to move right on to the 20th century. No, no, wait, wait. 1588 was the year of the Spanish Armada. I, I want to see it. I, I want 1588 to be now. I want to see Queen Elizabeth again. All right, but only for a minute. Look, there she is, on a white horse. My good soldiers, I have been your queen these 30 years. Have I done well? 
I have led you so far in peace. Now it is God's will that I should be your queen in war. I know I have the body of a weak and feeble woman, but I have the heart and stomach of a king, and of a king of England too, and think foul scorn that Palmer or Spain or any prince of Europe should dare to invade the borders of my realm, to which, rather than any dishonor should grow by me, I myself will take up arms. I myself will be your general. She's not as pretty as she was before. Her hair looks different. But that's what she meant. It's 30 years later. Time has changed her. There, that's enough, James. You've heard it. They're going to start fighting any minute. Press 400 and we'll be in 1988. No, 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 wait. They're going to have the Spanish Armada. I'd hate to miss a really good sea battle. We can be there. We can find out what it was really like. Oh... Oh, all right. Just a minute. Control, are you there? Can we see them getting ready for the Armada, please? Armada briefing session is available. Sea Lords Howard, Frobisher, and Drake, stand by, please. Sir Francis, uh, Sir Martin, uh, I have called you from your ships for a council of war. The messengers dispatched by our secret agents at the court of Spain have ridden across Spain and France. They have brought us news that the great fleet has sailed and soon will be upon us. The Spaniards call it that invincible armada. What do you believe, Drake? Can it be defeated? How great is it? Well, Frobisher, there's one thing I do know. It's not so great as it was at your back. <laughs> I know, Sir Francis, you destroyed half the King of Spain's fleet a year ago. But they have gathered many ships together since then. The country is waiting for them to put their men ashore. Beacons are laid. And when the enemy lands, they'll be lit in warning. Fire will sweep over England before the enemy shall land. They will not be in a hurry to land. They must first sail the length of the channel to the Low Countries. There they will pick up Palmer's army, thousands of fighting men. And then, only then, they will land on our happening. shores. Uh, well, they may well reach the Low Countries more speedily than they like or bargain for. You meaning, Sir Francis? Well, swear they've no thought for the southwest gales and the summer sea mists that every West Country sailor knows. Oh, the Spaniards will be driven early burly up the channel, out of line. Let us pray, then, that God will blow with his wind and they will be scattered. Amen to that, Lord Howard. God sends the winds and a sailor makes use of them. Our ships can drive between theirs and harry them on their way. Our gunners can blast holes in the sides of their great galleons. God bless them. They are worthy ships that serve the Queen. And then I am calling for little ships. Old fishing boats. Any lad who has a rowboat can come to our aid. With tar and kindling. And set up a light to bring havoc to the Spanish fleet. We can help them defeat the Armada. No fleet could survive them. Order your fleet of little boats, Sir Francis. And the Lord oh, bless us. only we had a boat. Will you go back to your ship, Sir Francis, when you've given your orders? Oh, not for an hour or so. As I find myself on dry land for a while... I shall stretch my legs with a game of bowls. <laughs> There'll be plenty of time, I assure you. <laughs> time. Everybody goes on about time. I only wish we were back in our own time. I'm programming the computer for a 400-year leap forward. No, 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 no. We can't go back now. We've seen Queen Elizabeth and we've heard Drake planning the Armada. And now we can go home. It happened just like Drake said. All the Spanish galleons sailed up the channel and then Drake set the fire ships among them. We must see the real thing. Some people are never satisfied. Some people are never satisfied. I can always fling you to the thick of the battle. But you won't like it. What's happening? Where are we? It's like looking at war news on the telly. It's only worse. I told you so. I told you so. Let's get out. Press the remote control. Press forward, even if it's only a bit. It must be better to go forward than back. That's what you think.
Oh, at last it's changing. We stopped moving about. Yeah. We must be on dry land again. Well, that's something anyway, but where are we? It's a street. A wide, cobbled street, and I'm sure I've seen it before somewhere, sometime. Years ago, in 1558. It's the street where we saw the coronation. Yes. But it looks different, and the people aren't dressed the same. They all seem to be angry, milling about, like a demo. Oh, goodness, where do we go from here? There's a little alley and a doorway. Let's go in there and shelter for a bit and try to sort ourselves out. There's an old wooden chest we can sit on, and we can still see if we keep the door open a crack. What time is it? Five past four. Oh, no, I mean 16.05. What happened then? I can't remember. You do look a mess, Lucy. Your T-shirt's torn and your knees are all covered in dirt. Well, your face is all black. I suppose it was the gunpowder at the Armada. Yeah. Oh, dear, all those bangs. It was worse than Guy Fawkes' night. 5th of November, 16.05. Are you ready, Mr. Fox? Hush, hush, quiet, I beg you. No names, no names. Someone's there. Someone's hiding. Who are you? What's your name? You have said it already. I am Guy Fawkes. No. Are you really? Goodness. What are you doing? Why are you hiding? Am I not safe anywhere? Have you heard of me? Surely everyone's heard of Guy Fawkes. What have you heard? It may not be true. Well, didn't you want to blow up the king and the houses of parliament? And didn't they find you in the cellars with barrels of gunpowder? They found gunpowder, but who knows who put it there? Our wish was to give men freedom to worship. Am I to be remembered only as a common conspirator? No, we remember, remember every 5th of November, and we all have fireworks. And have a bonfire, burn a guy. Oh, I'm sorry. But everyone knows you did it. The king and his council know who did it, but they say I did it. Honest men believe them, for they come. But their government would tell them lies. Well, I think you did it. It's in all the history books. And not all the history books can be wrong. <laughs> you sound like the people of London. They don't believe me. They want my death. But they have not found me. Not yet. Are you trying to escape? We want to escape into the future, into our own days. Boy, I have had my day. And I cannot escape from the future that lies ahead of me. My fellow conspirators and I are wanted men. And happier those who will be shot down by the troops who seize us. I shall be questioned day after day to give up the names of my friends. And yet, you tell me that at the last, my name, Guy Fawkes, will be remembered and hated forever. Careful, Mr. Fawkes. Your time is almost up. Open the door! Open it! Kick it open! You there! Guy Fawkes, I arrest you in the name of our sovereign lord, King James. On what charge? Conspiracy, high treason, seeking to bring about the death of the king. The crowd are hurting. Keep them back. Lady, I tell you, I shall wish every day until I die that the crowd had seized me before this officer had handed me over for my death. Truly said, Master Conspirator. My orders are to deliver you to the tower. And there you will die a slow, lingering death. And so will your two co-conspirators. What? What do you mean, us? We're only visitors. Well, take care. I may be back for you. Control. Control, stop it. Don't expect me to stop it. I'm programmed. I do what I'm told. I can't stop war and violence and bloodshed. I only shift time. You wanted to come here. It's all dreadful. But even if our own times are no better, they are our own times, and we feel at home there. Yeah, the trouble is, our own time is supposed to be a scientific age. It's difficult to see how we can get back there. Oh, Lucy, can't you think of a scientist in history? We seem to have got stuck around the 16th century. There weren't many scientists then. Wait. Program possible. Instructions about to come through. Calling Italy. Calling Florence.
Going back in time. Stand by for time shift. Calling Italy. Calling Florence. Florence? Who's she? Florence, the place, the city, you idiot. 14. 1482. Are you there, Signor da Vinci? Leonardo da Vinci? Wow! Yes, my son. Do you need my help? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to shout, but yes, I wonder if you could tell us something we want to know. Princes and great merchants come to me here in Florence and in Milan for that purpose, and I have tried to find answers for them. Is this room your laboratory? Certainly, I labor here. It is my studio, my workroom, what you will. Have you made all the models yourself? May we look? Surely. Oh, this is a flying machine. It's got wings like a bird. And this is an armored car, like a tank. What does this do? If the spring is well made and turned swiftly, it will rise in the air. <laughs> a helicopter yeah. all those centuries ago. Have these models been made for real? L life size, I mean. Oh, uh, no. No man knows if they will serve as engines of war, and uh, princes will only give money to turn ideas into engines of war. Oh, but they are engines of war. Weapons. We have them in our time. What's this funny-looking thing? Ah, uh, a peaceful toy. That is my press for crushing olives and finding the oil. Yes. Well, that's all very interesting, but do you have something to take us forward into our own times? A time machine. I have not yet achieved that, uh, but uh, there are my notebooks. Search among them to see if there is anything in them for you. Oh, great. Oh, there's a monster. Oh, horrible. Have you ever seen anything like that? Yes, truly, and so have you many times. Look closely. It has the body of a grasshopper, the wings of a dragonfly, and the head of a spider. Yeah. Always look closely. That is the best way to learn. Oh, I like those drawings of horses. I could stay here looking at things forever. But I think we must get back to today. I have no engine to help you, but everything is hidden in the mind of man. All knowledge is there, waiting to be discovered. Discovered? I'd like to be able to tell people something when we do get back. Lucy, I know what. While we are in history, why can't we discover something for ourselves? What do you mean? Well, couldn't we solve a mystery that's baffled historians for centuries? Like what? Who killed the princes in the tower? Everybody knows that. Richard III, of course. Are you so sure? Just, Just a moment, moment, please, King Richard. Wait your turn. Fourteen eighty-five. Fourteen eighty-five. A year of grace, to be sure. Who are you? Richard III, of course. I thought you were a hunchback. Oh, people will say anything about kings they dislike. I must ask you, did you really kill the princes in the tower? Is it likely? They were my nephews, the sons of my brother, Edward. They were in the tower under my protection. There was no support to their claim to the throne. I was crowned king already. The poor children were no threat to me. I had no need to kill them. Those innocents were safe in my hands. There you are then, Lucy. He didn't kill them. Where are they then? Oh, uh, in a happier place, dear lady. Personally, I don't like the look of him, hunchback or no hunchback. If it's 1485, you'd better get ready for the battle, Your Majesty. Battle? What battle? Bosworth Field. Ah, Henry Tudor again. Bosworth Field. I can, I can make, make that, that available. is this day dead and his crown struck from his head in battle I pick up that crown from the bush where it now lies <laughs>
As I raise it, I declare I am King Henry VII, in fact and in law, undoubted king of this realm. Please, are you king now? Yes, by today's battle. Are you going to rule England? That is my intention and God's will. Well, did you kill the princes in the tower? Men say the boys were dead before I became king. God knows I have no need to kill them. Oh, dear, that's just what King Richard said. Now we shall never know. But didn't Richard III say, a horse, a horse, my kingdom for a horse? He says that in that film we saw at school, James. But that comes out of a play by Shakespeare. Shakespeare! If he wrote all those plays about history and everything, perhaps he can tell us how to get out of history and back home. Oh, all right, all right. Control, control. We want to speak to William Shakespeare. Have you heard of him? Really? Do you think I am totally ignorant? Enter 1595 and G-L-O-B-E and see what happens. Ready now, please, ladies and gentlemen. We must press on with the rehearsal. We only have a few hours until the play commences. We must find out where we are. We, we can ask one of those people up on the platform. Well, they seem too busy to notice us. What are they doing anyway? Why are those two men sword fighting? Well, they're only pretending to fight. They're on a stage. Oh, James, it's a play. They're rehearsing for a play. Ah, oh, so it's the Globe Theatre. What play can it be? Who's that man on the stage? I no, look miserable. Right places, please, everybody. Romeo, Juliet. Oh, where's Juliet gone? Heavens above, it's more difficult directing these plays than acting in. Here I am, Mr. Barbage. My costume doesn't fit. I do beg you to make haste, everybody. We have to open the play this very day at three in the afternoon. We must go through it once more. Right, Mercutio Tybalt, can you put those swords down? I want to do the balcony scene. Uh, Juliet, Romeo, ah, there you are. All right, from the top. But soft, what light through yonder window breaks? It is the east, and Juliet is the sun. Arise, fair sun, and kill the envious moon, who is already sick and pale with grief, that thou her maid art far more fair than she. Be not her maid, since she is envious. Her vestal livery is but sick and green, and it looks like a good play. Look, look, there's it. Juliet at the window. It is a good it play, but I don't see how it'll help oh, us get home. My love. Well, there's a man over there with a pile of papers. He doesn't look too busy. Let's try him. All right. Please, sir, who are you? Oh, less than nothing, dear boy. I am only the author. The author? William Shakespeare, my dear. And that man making all the noise is my star actor, Mr. Burbage. He's a little old for Romeo, so he's directing the piece. No, no, no! This is a love scene! Is Shakespeare your real name? It is indeed. Uh, not such a fine actor as Burbage, but a better writer for Charles. Oh, yes, you're very famous. So, um, can you help us? I am at your service. Then, what time is it? Why, it lacks of noon. No. No, I mean, what year is it? It is the year of our Lord, 1595, and the 37th year of the Queen's reign. Queen Elizabeth? Is she still the Queen? Yes, I thank God for it. We shall pray for her good health at the play's end of this evening. She said time would change us all. She spoke truly, for our days go on slowly, one by one. Oh, Romeo, Romeo! Wherefore art thou, Romeo? Deny thy father and refuse thy name. Juliet looks like a boy. <laughs> of course she's a boy. A woman in a play. <laughs> the very thought of it. Thank you, thank you. It's so much better. Now clear the stage, please. The audience will be coming in at any moment. They must be going to start soon. People are beginning to arrive. Oh, I would like to stay and see them do this play. Oh, so would I. But where would we end up? Mr. Shakespeare, if we come from our own time and you're in your time, what about the actors? Are they just pretending? Why, yes. But in the pretense of the stage, much truth can be said. Remember, all the world's a stage, and all the men and women merely players. The play begins. 
I must away. Find yourselves a place. Uh, just one thing. Suppose we want to be in your time, and in our time, and inside the play as well. Why, so you can. You mean we can come and go just as we like? Just as the playwright does, you can travel back in time and bring the past to life. What has been and what will be is a voyage of discovery. The people who have lived and the people yet to be born are all part of that discovery. Oh, there's so much I want to know. How does Romeo and Juliet end? Yeah, and what's Shakespeare really like? My life and many lives are discoveries yet to be made. Discovery. Discovery. 1988. 1988. James, we're back in our room. Yeah, and there's the computer. Oh, but I would like to travel in time again sometime soon. Yeah. I want to know whether Leonardo did make his flying machine. And who really killed the princes in the tower. And what Queen Elizabeth wore and... Just enter D-I-S-C. We know. Discovery. And then anything is possible. Anyone can come to life. Joan of Arc. Courage, Dauphin. We have God on our side, and together we can drive the English out of France. Tutankhamun. I will take the treasures of Egypt to my tomb, just as my forefathers did. Future generations will wonder at our civilization. Al Capone. I own this city, and I got a message for anyone who thinks I don't. Scott of the Antarctic. From now on, we travel to the South Pole on foot. We must, repeat, must beat Amundsen and plant a Union Jack at the base of the world. Henry VIII. If you can't provide me with an heir, Anne, we can no longer be married. George Washington and the War of Independence. Hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Queen Victoria. Mr. Gladstone speaks to me as if I were a public meeting. If only my beloved Albert were here at my side. The first men on the moon. One small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Discovery! Travel back in time and bring the past to life.